for this project, I'll be cutting a piece of wood off of this slab of what I think is soft maple. I picked it up over a decade ago from a local uh, lumber mill. I read everybody's comments and I take notes. Catstar had a had a good idea with the Celtic knot pattern. Uh, so I let that stew for a while and this is how it all worked out. And I gotta say it was uh, it was questionable at times. I thought this bull was headed to the scrap heap more than once. The wood's been sitting around for so long that uh, and there's little little bug holes. Uh, the texture of the wood. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was rotten on the inside or uh, if it had gone punky in places. Regardless of the possibility of failure, I wanted to push forward with the project and record whatever it was that was going to happen. My original intention was to uh, route out the little segments just as they're drawn on the wood here. Uh, and it would give it kind of a basket weave type effect with the, uh, with the rope going over and under itself. And this gives you an idea of how long this actually took. It's just real slow movements, real uh, firm, steady grip on the router. Uh, just positive control the whole time. If you saw that dust that came out, I was really concerned about that. It was so dark. Uh, I thought that was indicating some, uh, some uh, problems inside the wood. And here you can see I've decided to go with a uh, just a solid pattern. I just didn't like the look of the uh, the separate little sections. It it just didn't look right to me. So I just routed out the whole pattern. When I was doing this, I was concerned that uh, some of the smaller uh, pieces that I was routing around would would catch and fly out and that did happen with a couple you'll see that uh, result here in a little while right there two of the little chunks came flying out so now I'm concerned about the the wood itself being bad and I'm concerned about this pattern not working out but again, I'm pushing forward. I'm going to do this. We'll see. We'll just see how it turns out. I just used five minute epoxy to glue those down. I didn't want them floating up when I put the resin in. And it took quite a bit more resin than I thought it would and uh, it turns out that was just my my uh, miscalculation in measuring. But I thought at the time that uh, the resin was seeping down into uh, insect uh, bore patterns or something. Maybe even rotten wood. So I was a little apprehensive about what was happening there. Here I'm just using a heat gun to get rid of the bubbles. And if you look there in the middle of the, the resin, you can see that uh, quite a few more bubbles had formed during the drying process. 
which was about 24 hours. Yeah. So once again, I wasn't sure if the resin had failed, uh, if, if it was all bubbly on the inside where it counted. Uh, there's just a lot of questions about what was going on uh, on the inside. Uh, I wasn't confident this was going to work. I always keep my tools really sharp. I sharpen frequently during, during the process of making a bowl. But I could see a lot of dust. Uh, where it should just be shavings, so I had to stop it and take a look. Oh man, that tear up. Oof. So the concern is again, is the wood bad all the way through the bowl? But something I've learned is uh, sometimes you can go against the grain and cause tear outs. So I, I went the opposite direction and as you saw there the tear out wasn't as bad. I said against the grain but really it's, it's kind of an uphill, downhill type thing. So if you know your tool is sharp and you're still getting bad tear outs, just try going the other direction and see how that works and be really gentle with the tool. Not a lot of pressure. And here I'm cutting a very shallow mortise, about uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. Just deep enough so the little teeth on the outside of my chuck jaws uh, can grab hold for when I reverse mount this. Initially, I used the tailstock uh, just for added support because of that shallow mortise. But very quickly, because of uh, the way I'm designing this bowl with the, the wide rim, which I'm going to need to undercut, uh, the tailstock gets in the way. So I remove the tailstock, and then I've got to take that pillar down. And once I do that, I pivot the headstock uh, out so that I can more easily access uh, the places on the bowl that I need, like here, to undercut the rim. The wood is looking okay, but there's still a lot of tear outs and there's really not a lot I can do about the direction of the cut on the inside of the bowl. So I switch from my bowl gouge to a, a heavy run nose scraper, which is super sharp as you can see by the shavings there. Uh, it's still going to give me some tear outs, but it worked a little bit better. Up until this point, I really wasn't confident how this bowl was going to turn out. But it was right about here during the process that, that I saw the resin actually worked out okay on the inside. 
It was looking good. And I was feeling good. But even so, I still had all of this tear out to deal with. And it was deep and kind of nasty. So I had to go all the way down to 40 grit, which I've never used before on a turning. Uh, and put a good bit of pressure down. And uh, it chewed right through it. Worked great. It took a long time to get back to the 1,000 grit finish that I wanted. A lot of sanding. But it was worth it. It seems funny to say, but sometimes when I'm making one of these, and, and this one in particular, uh, I, I get emotionally invested in it. It's kind of like telling a story or writing a poem. It just speaks to me in a way that I, I can't really explain. I just have a lot of passion for this, and I hope it shows through. I hope you feel what I feel. I just absorb into these projects. They take me away from the fast-paced world outside into the peace and solace of my wood shop. I'm happy to share it with you. And I'm so thankful there's so many of you that are interested in what I'm doing. There's more coming. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Maybe even share. Help my channel grow. Help me share my passion. Take care. Semper Fi. Good morning, it's September 13th, 2018, and we're here to pick an alternate winner for the Rosewood Bowl giveaway. I haven't heard from Tony Fatboy uh, in the time allotted, so I'm going to use the same YouTube random comment picker to pick the alternate. So I enter the URL for the video and then filter the uh, duplicate users. Remember, it has to be a comment on the video from a subscriber. Good luck, everybody. Cinda99, Cinda99. You're the winner. Congratulations. Cinda99, I checked your YouTube page and you don't have any contact information. Please check the video description for my contact information and send me an email as soon as possible.